Hello, it's Sis Folk. Time to enjoy card making with me. In this video I'm going to make two cards using the hot foil birthday text that I showed in a previous video and foiled with a hot foil machine. These glimmer plates have a foil plate and a separate die. Don't skip right away if you don't have a hot foil machine, because you can also make this card with a stamped or die cut text. This is a kind of bronze color hot foil, one of my favorite colors. And this other happy birthday I foiled with a blue foil and then die cut it. Combined with slimline stencils, I'm going to try to make something nice out of these. These are the slimline sets B3 and B1. There are 10 stencils in a package. I have already made some samples of these and from each of the sets I'm going to use a stencil for today's cards. The B1 stencils have animal prints as you can see. With a craft or white paper and white and brown opaque ink you will have a very cool background. If sometimes you do not know how to color such a pattern best, it can be helpful to look at some images on the internet as examples. The B3 stencils have shapes and patterns you can use for several things. For example, in blue it's barbed wire, and in brown a wicker chair. Or in blue the skin of a fish and in brown street tiles. Or wall stones versus car wheel prints, etc. Very surprising! These are the two stencils I'm going to use. Although I'm going to ink blend the blue in a different way than in this example. Because here it's blended from top to bottom, from dark to light, and I'll do it more randomly. You will see in a moment. This brown tiger print I'm also going to use. So that one is from the B1 series. I partially blended the background with vintage photo distress oxide without a stencil. Not the whole panel, you can see the edges remain partly white. Over that I used black soup ink to blend the stripes with the stencil. This gives the effect of a real tiger. I used fairly thin paper, but smooth paper. I trimmed the panel for the card so it would fit on the slimline card, but a little bit smaller, leaving a wide border. It will be 20 a half by 10 cm, but a little bigger or smaller will do as long as it is equally smaller than the card on all sides. I have a plastic foil bag here that I normally keep my cards in to protect them from dirt and dust before mailing them. It's just a thin sturdy piece of plastic. You can also very well use acetate foil and then the card will be firmer and heavier. Since I am making a slimline card that is already a bit larger and therefore heavier in weight, I want to keep it light. The paper I'm working with is 120 grams paper. Now I place it in the center of the bag. It doesn't need to be perfectly centered. The edges you fold over and tape down. I use regular tape for it. Don't fold the edges too tight, because it will be a shaker card. And then there should be a little space left between the plastic and the paper. We'll leave the top open for the moment. Here I put some translucent sequins in a tray. They are from Alina Craft. I sprinkle some orange beds in there. And I do that because then it will shake a little better. I also have some of these glitters, which make it a little shinier. The advantage and disadvantage of that is that they are static. Now it suddenly occurred to me that this black dye with bronze hot foil would also match nicely. Actually, I wanted to take this one. Yes, I change my plans sometimes. Do you? Well, I stick to my plan and use the black one for another card. The sequins now go in the bag, on the front of the card of course. See, there you have it, the glitters are static. But for this card, I like that they also stick to the top, while the rest of the beads and sequins fall down. Now this is the time to see if there is enough or too much shape material in the card. But I think it's pretty enough this way and the colors match nicely too. Finally we fold the top. You can cut off the corners but I don't recommend doing that because then the content will fall out. 
With such thin plastic you can easily fold it over and stick it with tape. With sturdy acetate you can also do this, but then it is best to crease the folding seams first with a greasing tool and tape the folded edges with double sided tape. The shaker card can now be glued to the base card, in my case a double folded slimline card. I also stick the text down with double sided tape. Glue loosens faster and stains sooner anyway, so I prefer tape. This is the thinnest roll of tape from Alina Craft. I love this font of this text, bold and graceful at the same time. Look at that fold shining beautifully, really a cool card. I obviously want to make a matching envelope to this card. I can then immediately show you how I color the card. I put a piece of cardstock inside the envelope, so it's a little firmer and the seams of the envelope won't show through when ink blending. For ink blending I use two colors of oxide ink. I have the vintage photo and the black suit colors here. It's very easy. You start with the vintage photo. The brown color. Then you apply some ink on a blending tool. This can also be a brush, just what you prefer. But for oxide ink I like to use the domed blending tools, because you can apply thicker ink and oxide ink is also opaque, so it works very well with these. First you wipe off excess ink from the sponge and then you make a kind of line with circular movements. Very randomly you then ink blend just like the skin of a panther, a little darker on the inside and lighter on the outside. On the other side I make another one. It doesn't really matter if it's perfect and there's an ugly spot, because we're going to go over this with the stencil. Therefore it won't be so noticeable. After all a panther doesn't have a perfect fur either. So now we'll take the black ink and the stencil. This is the stencil, it is from the B1 series. I have a glass magnetic work mat from Craft Emotions, which is very handy when working with stencils. If you don't have a magnetic work mat, you can also stick the stencil on the back with tape, or glue it on the front with masking tape. Or use spray glue for example, just what you prefer or have at hand. Now blend with the black ink over the stencil, but only in the center. There you ink it dark and blur the ink out to the edges. So in the middle it is very black and at the edges it becomes lighter, see? Sometimes I dab, sometimes I swirl and sometimes I go with the figures in the stencil, depending on how much ink I want in a certain place. So very black in the middle and more blurry at the edges. It is also very handy that the oxide ink is opaque and covers well. Well, the same thing you do for the other side as well. It might be wise to shift the pattern so that you don't have the same thing on two sides. And you see, I continue over the flap too. Well nice if the pattern continues there too. Cool, eh? I will also show you briefly how to ink blend the blue stencil. This pattern gives the idea of waves, which is why I work with blue inks for this. I use Chip Sapphire, Mermaid Lagoon and Salty Ocean. These three colors together give a very nice combination. You can choose to work from top to bottom or vice versa, from dark to light. I choose to make some parts dark and other parts lighter and let them blend into each other. Now I do have to hold the stencil a little bit and move with the strokes, otherwise I pull it loose. It is a stencil with a very open structure, but that doesn't matter. If you really want to lay down such a stencil perfectly, you could attach it with temporary spray glue. I have now applied the light color blue on three parts, adding some Mermaid Lagoon. Next I let the colors blend into each other. With a stencil like this, I don't think you can easily go wrong. If you make something that looks like water, it'll get pretty quickly. Finally, I apply some dark blue, very lightly and work only on the edges. The pattern is longer than I need, 
so any part I don't like as much can be cut off later. For a little more contrast, add some more dark blue. It is always better to start light, then briefly peek at how it looks and then apply more ink if necessary. With some more light ink, you can have the ink blend in. See, now there is a little more contrast. I'm going to cut this panel to size and make a shaker out of that too. The same way I did with the other card. I always make my card base out of A4 paper. I crease the seam of the card with a scoring board at 10.5 cm. For this I use the metal creasing tool from Alina Craft. You fold the valley fold over to the outside. This seam you fold crisp with a bone folder. It can also be done with your nail. Or with a rounded edge of scissors. But a bone folder is easiest. The remaining overhang is then cut with scissors or a trimmer. I save the remaining pieces to use again for stamping or hot foiling sentiments. This way I have a 10.5 cm by 21 cm card. I already cut the blue panel at 9.5 cm by 20 cm, leaving a nice white border. I'm going to fill this shaker with the same sequence from Alina Craft. I mix these with blue beds. Again to make shaking easier. The shaker is now sealed with tape and to stick it to the card now I'm using double sided tape from Alina Craft again. This roll is almost used up. It is a 50 meter roll so it lasts a very long time. I do make a lot of cards so then it runs out faster of course. I have three different sizes of Alina's tape. I shall show them to you. This is an 8 mm wide tape. It has 50 meters on it. This is the 3 mm tape and again it has 50 meters on it. And this is the 5 mm tape. The one I'm using right now is the 5 mm. They are all very useful. This is the most convenient way to tape up a panel with double sided tape. You pull off a small piece of the protective backing at all corners, place the panel where you want it and you can still move it around a bit. When it's well in place you press the corners and then you can pull off the protective backing. This dark blue hot foil goes well with the dark blue background. To me this is a fun and easy light weighted way to make a nice shaker card. And I like the shininess a lot. I have already inked part of the envelope. Still with some extra dark blue ink over it. I create depth and contrast. And it matches the card very nicely again. With this envelope I forgot to put a piece of cardstock inside before blending. Do you see that it created an unattractive ridge? The flap I forgot to blend with it. Fortunately this is easily solved by putting a piece of paper under the flap. So you can color it as a loose edge of course. Isn't it nice when you have a stencil that you can also use to make a matching envelope? Well this turned out to be the result. You can see a little bit of the seam of the envelope but I can live with it. Never forget to put a shim inside before inking. The shaker turned out nicely and I am very happy with this hot foil. It fits perfectly. Nice and thin too. This is called a seamless shaker card by the way. Funny how the white sequins change color and take on the color of their surroundings. Both cards contain the same sequins from Alina Craft. In the top right corner you will find more videos of mine that you might be interested in. If you click on the button I, you will go there automatically. When you create an account with YouTube and log in, you can leave a comment. I would love to read that. I make these videos for you and hope you enjoy watching them and also hope you learned something from them. Of course it makes me very happy if you use my affiliate links. There are links that redirect you to Alina Cross Store on AliExpress, but there are also links to Amazon. 
By using my affiliate links, I receive a small percentage commission. So thank you very much in advance for clicking on my links. Alina Craft sells lots of types of stencils and also many different colors of hot foil. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. Maybe as a new subscriber to my channel. Bye bye!